right now. Again, want to welcome to the program the uh, author of the brand new book, The Unarmed Truth, My Fight to Blow the Whistle and Expose Fast and Furious. Uh, ATF agent John Dodson uh, joins us on the program. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for having me, sir. Absolutely. Um, thousands of guns ended up in the hands of Mexican uh, drug cartel members. Of course, uh, a U.S. Border Patrol agent, Brian Terry, lost his life as a result of Fast and Furious. And, uh, Agent Dawson, if it weren't for you coming forward, uh, honestly, do you think that the American people would know anything today uh, about Fast and Furious? Other than what you know had come out in a press release talking about all of the arrests and the convictions that had uh, come about as a result of this investigation. Right. Well, I, I don't know, sir. There were a number of us in, in the group that were concerned about the strategy and had voiced our objections to it. I like to think that uh, that even had I not been able to say anything or, or had decided not to, that, you know, someone else would. Like I say, federal law enforcement is – there's a lot of good people that, that are just trying to do the job. Um, and, but then you get in a situation like this, and, uh, you know, it's really hard to kind of understand the mindset that's involved. All right. As you say, um, you are not alone in, in having concerns uh, about this operation. One of the things that I've never been able to understand – is how this was supposed to work. We're going to let we're going to let thousands of guns uh, uh, go across the border. We're not going to interdict them. We're not going to have any way of going and arresting these folks once the guns have gotten across the border. How was this supposed to lead to the arrest of high-level drug cartel members in Mexico? Well, sir, I, I can't answer that for you. As a matter of fact, that's one of the questions that I posed, you know, to my supervisors and the case agent, you know, up my chain of command, because I. To me, with my experience, you know, doing what we were doing, allow the firearms to walk and just log in as the straw purchases or straw purchasers, you know, made the transactions, then to just sit back and wait until they recovered, you know, traced by whatever agency recovered them on either side of the border after they were used in a crime. Like, you can't get to the stated objective, which was to take down a cartel. You know, you can't get there by doing that. Right. Um, okay. So there was no... There was no clear way of, of determining how this was how you were able to, how you were going to be able to accomplish your objectives, and yet this went on for over a year. Correct. Uh, and it was not until the the death of uh, 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 Border Patrol agent Brian Terry, uh, it seems as if there was really any impetus to 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 stop Fast and Furious. Well, that that, that that's correct in part, yes, sir. Um, like I say, me and, and the other agents had been voicing our concerns from the very beginning. But, you know, we had exhausted, I personally had exhausted every legitimate avenue known to me, you know, that my agency and that the government allows for, trying to get word to someone, trying to talk to someone, to you know, in order to explain to them what we were doing and the potential consequences of it and what was going to happen. So it, it's not like it, I don't want you to think or, or your listeners to think that it's just nobody cared until Agent Terry was, right. was killed. It's, but we did. We just – there was nothing – you know, we knew that the crimes were, were occurring in Mexico and the deaths, you know, the body count was just stacking up and stacking up. But there was never you – know, you didn't have a name. You didn't have somebody to put with it in order to, to really make a difference until, Agent, unfortunately, Agent Terry was, you know, murdered. You know, Agent Dawson, nobody's been fired. Um, folks like Dennis Burke, the uh, head of the U.S. Attorney's Office in Arizona at the time of this investigation, allowed to – retire, going away parties held. I understand they had a cake for them. Uh, there have been a lot of people who've been shuffled around uh, and allowed to quietly leave. But but there really has been, throughout this entire process, there's been no real substantive indication uh, by this administration that, that any wrongdoing occurred. Are you satisfied with what we've seen? Uh, are, you, are you satisfied with the consequences that we have seen from this administration? Well, that, yeah, no, sir, not at all. I mean, I think that, you know, like the very first question that you asked, you know, what is the, how is this going to work? Whosever idea this was, if it was one person's idea that put this into place and approved the strategy and launched it all to happen, you know, that, that person has never been identified, has never taken responsibility or been held accountable. And, and I, like you, would still like to answer that question as well as numerous others. You know, how did you anticipate getting from where we were going, you know, facilitating the trafficking of firearms? to taking down a cartel. It doesn't make sense. But it's all, you know, it's all a symptom of the greater problem, which is the size and the scope of the federal government, where it is so big that these things can occur. And ultimately, 
you know, no one is responsible or you can never determine responsibility, much less hold someone accountable. Right. Well, and to that end, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the uh, big investigative story that the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did uh, yesterday, but they, they took a look at six other operations around the country, uh, Milwaukee, Portland, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Pensacola, Florida, where ATF agents set up fake storefronts. Uh, to try to engage in uh, a, a drug trafficking and gun, or excuse me, a gun trafficking, and on multiple occasions, uh, these agents were were using seeking out uh, developmentally disabled individuals to sort of use as the middleman and and befriending individuals with IQs in their fifties, uh, and saying, hey, you know, can you help us get guns? And and basically using these individuals, then turning around and prosecuting them, setting up these false storefronts a thousand feet away from a, a middle school, allowing individuals to uh, uh, underage drink alcohol, to smoke pot, uh, all in the name of uh, of reducing crime, allowing crime to happen, and in some cases perhaps even encouraging crime, all in the name of of making this a safer society. That's just messed up, Agent Dodson. Oh, so I agree with you entirely, but you see, it's the same thing. I mean, use the same kind of logic in terms of, of gun trafficking or gun walking. You know, we, um, we, what happens is the agencies in there, it, the shift has, or a shift is taken from when I first started in law enforcement, which was to pr protect and serve. You know, and as I explained in the book, in, in those beginning days, you know, we couldn't be evaluated on the things that were really important, which is how many crimes we deterred, we prevented from happening. Mm -hmm. And it's evolved into this situation, or, or as it is now, this mantra of, you know, we declare ourselves the solution to a problem, and then we have to go out and manufacture the problem in order to demonstrate how effective we are solving it. So the, if you look at the storefront cases, especially the one in Minnesota, uh, or Milwaukee, I'm sorry, and the other ones that they, you know, they put out in that article, the same mentality, the same mindset is there in both of them. You know, the ends will justify the means. We know this is happening, or they think they know this is happening, so we just need to go out there and facilitate it to happen so that we can come in and save the day. Absolutely. And that's the problem. The mindset is, you know, it's it permeated all through federal law enforcement. And you go back to Fast and Furious, and there are State Department reports from inside of Mexico uh, that say, look, there is no Iron River of, of guns flowing into the country. What there is is there's... There, there's a, there are these little trickles. There are, there are one or two individuals who are going across with maybe one gun. It, it, I mean, honestly, Agent Dotson, when you, when you read the State Department report and then you looked at Operation Fast and Furious, it looked like we were the iron pipeline. If, if one existed, it was, it was us. For, it, and, I, and I agree with you, sir. The, the circumstances, the facts and the circumstances totally you know, substantiate that argument. And, and it goes back to that mindset of, They've already established what they believe to be the problem, whether it is the problem or not. You know, mm -hmm. that, okay, there's an Iron River flowing from the U.S. consumer firearms market into Mexico fueling this violence. And these are people with, with no direct knowledge or experience in that, in that world, you know, to, to have a basis to form that opinion. But that opinion is formed. So then, the, you know, the law enforcement agencies are charged with, and for some reason they have this mentality of having to appease those that, you know, come up with these decisions. Okay, here's the problem. Well, the, the numbers and the stats don't substantiate it. They don't prove the problem. So what do you do? Well, you, in your mind, in their mind, it's happening anyway. Just facilitate it to happen so that we can track it and prove the case. All right. Uh, last question for you. I know we're running out of time. I could spend all hour with you, uh, Agent Dodson. But um, give us your, 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 your biggest uh, recommendations to fix uh, the agency and and do you think that the agency actually is, that it is a it is an agency wide problem? Is that where you have to fix it? Well, yes. I mean, I th so I think that's kind of evident. Like I say, if it if it's occurring in firearms trafficking and they say that this has stopped, you know, gun walking has stopped. Well, now you see it in the storefront investigations, and it's the same mentality, the same mindset that's occurring there. Well, if that is stopped now, then it's just going to continue in another aspect, you know, home invasion investigations or, or things like that. So is it agency-wide? Unfortunately, I believe it is. I think it's government-wide. And, you know, the, the way to stop it is just, you know, and this is part of the reason or, or one of the great reasons that I wrote the book, which is to try to tell people, especially employees and, and law enforcement, to say, you know what, you can say no. Like, you can stand up. You can think independently. And when something's wrong, it's wrong, and you can say so. You know, and together, if enough of us stand up and try to put a stop to this, we can stop it. We can make a difference. Listen, uh, John Dodson, thank you so much for coming on the program. The book is The Unarmed Truth, 
my fight to blow the whistle and expose Fast and Furious. Would love to have you back. And, uh, again, thank you for writing this. Oh, thank you, sir. And I'll come back anytime. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, John Dodson joining us here on NRA News, Cam and Company. Again, the uh, book is out now.